Greetings to all. I would like now to create a few objects in our database. Mainly, I will create a simple table. What do I call a simple table? A simple table for me is a table that does not have any attribute, which is a foreign key. But before we create a simple table, every table usually has a primary key. And the primary key is usually fixed, like chosen by the app, whereby it starts with number one, number two, number three, number four, increasingly, and so on and so on. So we need a sequence that will allow us to build our primary keys. Let's start by clicking on SQL Workshop to create our tables and our sequence. Once I am in SQL Workshop, I need to choose which database am I working on? Which schema am I working on? You can see here set and this arrow will give me a list of the different schemas in my workspace. In this case, I'm going to choose the new schema student marks database and set it as my schema. Very, very good. Now that I am in that schema, I will try to create a sequence first, an increasing sequence from one, two, three, and so on, and then a simple table. I have to click on Object Browser. In Object Browser, there is a plus here, which means the creation of objects. Let's start by the creation of a sequence. Our sequence, let's give it a name. Let us call it sequence sec. We can call it ink one sequence to increase by one. That sequence will start with number one and every time it will be incremented by one from there i simply have to go to next anything wrong no green and we can create the sequence very very good the sequence has been created starting from one and ending up to nine 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 now, it's time to go and create tables. We can also go to create and choose create a table. We will be prompted to enter the name of our table. I am building a small database for the recording of students' registration into courses. And we'll start by the creation of the table courses. Now, you can see the other tables of that schema, of that database. We will create them later on. Let's start with courses. Courses has one, two, three, four, five attributes, starting with the course ID, which is the primary key. Then it has a course code. It has a title. The title of the course. A course also has a level, leverage which can be first year course, second year course, third year course, and so on. And a course is also defined by its season, which can now be, yes, it is a first semester course, that is the season, or it is a second semester course, it is a second, a third semester course, or maybe the season might be a year course. Now, let's go and type the course name. This is our course name. I'm simply going to copy it, go back to Apex, and type the course name. Control-V, 
should give me the course name. After that, we will give the attributes. The first attribute was CID. So I'm going to collect CID as the first attribute and simply also type it here as the first attribute. What is the type for that attribute? It is a number. And uh, we don't want the attribute to be null. And uh, it is the identity by default. Thereafter, they will ask us, what do we want as the second attribute? The second attribute is the course code. But I'm also going to copy, control C, and I'm going to paste the course code is the second attribute. Which type is it? That one is a string, a set of variable characters. How many characters? As a course code is not too long, let's give it 20 characters. We do not want the course code to be empty. Thereafter, we can now go and type in the title, which is the third attribute, which is the title of the course. The title of the course, we also want it to be a variable string, a little bit longer. Let's give him 100, mm. not empty also. And after the title, we are going to need the level of the course. We said is a first year course, second year course, third year course, and so on. So the level of the course can be pasted as a varchar 2 level 1 level 2 is not too long we can also give him 20. then uh, it is not null after that what else do we need i think the last one is now the season which is first semester second semester third semester or year course the season we will paste it as the last attribute and uh, Thereafter, specify that it is also a character. We can give him also 20, not null. We have now defined all the attributes of our course, and we can go to the next screen. In the next screen, we'll be asked about the primary key. Yes, we want a primary key that is populated from the sequence that we just defined populated from an existing sequence. They already gave the name of that sequence, of the constraint of the sequence, and they are now asking which primary key do we want? We want the course ID to be the primary key. And which sequence do we want to use? We want to use the first sequence that we have defined and our sequence to increase the different course IDs. Next. Now we would want to see, are there foreign keys? No. Our initial assumption was that we are building a simple table with no foreign key. So at this level, we'll simply go to next without defining any foreign key. Now, we need to indicate which one of the attributes are unique. What does that mean? If we take an attribute, can two records have the same value of that attribute? If it is unique, then two records cannot have the same value. For example, two courses cannot have the same code. So the code attribute is unique. We have to push it there and add it. That is the first constraint. The course of the code of the course is unique. Course UK1 is a constraint. It is unique. Good. That constraint has been added. Another constraint is the title. Two courses cannot have the same title. So we also want it to be unique. And uh, we will change the name of that constraint because the first one was UK1. We'll now call it UK2. And we will add it as the second constraint. 
Good. You can now see here the two attributes that we want to have unique values for the courses are the code and the title. Thereafter, we can go to next. And uh, you'll see everything is in green, which means our table is about to be created. Create table. The table has been created, and you can see it here, table courses. We can play with data to add data to our courses. So far, there is no data. We can insert a row in the data, and it will add us what is the course ID. Usually, that is incremented. What is the course code? We can say DS3. What is the title? We can say development software what is the level we can say year three what is the season we can say this is a year course and the record can be created the record has been created then if i want to create another record i will just say insert row what else can we do Yes, I think that's all that we can do for this table. Thank you very much. So, in fact, there are other things that you can do. If you go to table, for example, you'll see that you are able to add columns to your table courses. I can click on add column and you'll see they'll ask you the new, the name of the new column and you have to input the type and so on. If I go back to courses, I may also want to inside table, modify a specific column. I click on modify the column and they'll ask me which column am I looking for and I choose that column and modify it in terms of data type and so on. If I go back to courses again, I may want to delete a certain colon. I may want to rename, change the name of a certain colon. They will ask me what is the old name, what is the new name. If I go back to table in the courses, I may also want to delete a certain colon. That is by clicking drop colon. And then they will ask me, which column do I want to drop? And I will delete it. Now, what can I also do here? I may want to rename the entire table. And here they'll ask me, what is the name of the table? The table is courses. What is the new name? And then I'll have to give a new name for the table. I can go back to courses and uh, see my data. This is where we started. If I want to add a new data, I will insert the row. I think that is a, a small overview of what we can do with tables. Thank you.